back like we never left. It's Double Move Sports. As always, I'm Steph Albiero. I'm flying solo this week. Alex is on a hiatus. Next week, he'll be taking over for me while I'm out. So we're just passing the baton back and forth. But we are rocking and rolling in this fantasy season. Moving into week four, we're going to get into these wide receiver start sits. It is a loaded slate all across the board. Super excited for some of these matchups. Some really, really high over-unders this week. So should be fun for the wide receivers. But before I get into it, if you guys like the show, if you appreciate the work we're putting in here, this hustle and this grind that we're on this season, a like and a sub on YouTube, greatly, greatly appreciated. And maybe as we go through this, there's two guys that we say are starters and you have both of them on your roster. You don't know which one to pick. Well, that's when you hit that Discord channel, that free link down below. Join the conversation with me, Alex, and over 200 other members of our community it's, it's a, just a good time when they were laughing, chopping it up, taking victory laps after incredible fantasy roster performances. It's just a blast. And then later on this week, we'll be doing a Q&A on Friday. We'll be doing a live stream, answering your questions, getting into some lineups. And of course, we do those in the Discord as well that are more exclusive and more intimate as we're screen sharing, going through different rosters, critiquing draft picks, talking about dynasty trades, everything in that Discord channel. But without further ado, let's get into the slate. The first one, Thursday night, the Jacksonville Jaguars playing the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are seven and a half point favorites at home. It's a 45 point over under, which I am smashing the over on because I do think this will be more of a high flying matchup. At this point, Jamar Chase is an every week starter. You, you have to put him in there after the performances to start his career. He's playing fantastic. So Jamar Chase, definitely a start. And if Higgins doesn't play, that's the easy decision. You just go Chase and Boyd, and you don't look back. On the Jacksonville Jaguars side of the ball, it's a lot more interesting. I think you can start all three of Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chenault, and DJ Chark. It's actually funny how similar these offenses are from a fantasy perspective. You have three solid wide receivers and no tight end of consequence in the passing game. And Marvin Jones at this point is an every week starter. He, he's a wide receiver two flex option. He's sitting at the wide receiver 16 on pace for 158 targets, which would be absolutely ridiculous. Marvin Jones, I don't want to see any more questions on start sit Marvin Jones. You're starting him unless you're in like an eight or six team league. DJ Chark also on pace for over 100 targets, on pace for 124 targets. He is going to be more boom bust than Marvin Jones, but he is still getting the air yards, the downfield targets where he can be a, a flex option for you in fantasy. And then LaVisca Chenault is really playing that PPR machine, high floor type of role. I think you can roll him out there with confidence. Just know that he's not going to give the upside of any of the options that we've named on either side of the ball. LaVisca is really just a high floor play. Maybe hope he gets the touchdown. Still waiting for him to ascend. We think that he can, but as of right now, I'm taking everybody else in this game on the wide receivers over LaVisca Chenault, but still willing to roll him out there. He's also on pace for 113 targets, so certainly can put up those numbers this year with that type of volume. Next, we have the Washington football team against the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are one-point underdogs at home. It's a 48.5 point over-under. You're starting Terry McLaurin every single week. Curtis Samuel is eligible to return. I'm curious to see what his snap counts look like. I feel like just based on the way that they eased Curtis Samuel into training camp before this season, they'll probably ease him back into game reps. So I'm not starting him this week, but certainly a guy, if he's on your waiver wire for some reason, grab him. If he's on your IR, you might need to move him out of there in week five based on what we see here in week four. But Curtis Samuel, definitely got to keep an eye on, should be the number two right behind McLaurin pretty easily. And then for the Falcons, of course, you're starting Calvin Ridley every single week. He's not giving us that super high ceiling, that, that top five ceiling that we expected from him. And that's really because the Falcons are struggling overall as, as an offense. But I think you can still plug in Ridley. He has that high floor with the tunneled target situation. You're sitting Olamide Zacchaeus. You're sitting Russell Gage. If you have Kyle Pitts, and I threw him in here. I know we're not doing tight ends, but I think you can continue to start Kyle Pitts. I know last week was a little disappointing, just the way that the games go sometimes, especially for rookie tight ends. Next, we have the Detroit Lions taking on the Chicago Bears. The Bears are three and a half point favorites at home after a brutal week against the Cleveland Browns in week three. It's a 44 and a half point over under. I'm expecting a get right game 
for the Bears offense. Their offensive line was absolutely brutal, but I do expect them to adjust to a degree. And we know what Allen Robinson is at this point. You just have to close your eyes, throw him back into your lineup. He is a stud. He's the clear one. And he has a proven track record of just being an alpha X wide receiver. One of the best every single year underrated wide receivers in the NFL. I am going to sit Darnell Mooney though and wait and see if the Bears can get right. He's just not seeing the consistent production that we want him to have to be a weekly starter, but we do believe it's still there. Keep Mooney stash. Don't drop him if you're feeling a little discouraged by his week three numbers. And then for the Lions, you can't start any of these receivers. You can't start Quintez Cephas. You can't start Amon Ross St. Brown. You can't start Khalif Raymond. None of these guys are doing it week in, week out. Maybe if we see Cephas emerge, maybe if we see Amon Ra emerge, then we'll, we'll latch on to them. If you keep following us on the show, we will let you know when it's time to stash those guys on your bench. But for right now, leave all those Lions receivers out on the waiver wire. And then moving over to the Titans, taking on the Jets. The Jets are seven and a half point underdogs. It's a 46 point over under. This is an interesting one because A.J. Brown is having the hamstring issue. He's hurt. Of course, if he plays, you put him in, but it doesn't sound like he will. Julio Jones, on the other hand, assuming he's also healthy, I did see him leave the game for a bit last week. He should be a smash play against the Jets. Should be an easy matchup. If A.J. Brown's out, he becomes the de facto number one. Should be in a funneled targeting situation. Should be easy for him to put up numbers against the Jets. So, essentially, you're playing A.J. Brown and Julio Jones every single week if they're healthy, if they're playing, if they're in the lineup. I'm not really interested in that third option, that third receiver, whoever it is from the Tennessee Titans. I don't want to start Josh Reynolds. I don't want to start Chester Rogers. Just can't do it until we see consistently them putting up production week in, week out. Maybe if Chester Rogers has a boom week, we look at him as a streamer going into week five, but leave those guys on the waivers for this week. And then the Jets side of the ball, you can't trust Elijah Moore. You can't trust Jamison Crowder. But I think you can start Corey Davis. He is a start for me. He's seeing a 21% target share. I know the offense is absolutely brutal. I know Zach Wilson is crumbling, but Corey Davis is an alpha X wide receiver. And we're seeing that X wide receivers that are getting target volume are going to put up numbers no matter how bad the situation is. Just look at Brandon Cooks with the Texans. Next, we have the Browns taking on the Vikings. The Vikings are one and a half point underdogs at home. But it's a delicious 52 and a half point over under. I'm starting Odell Beckham, sitting everyone else on the Brown side of the ball. And then with the Vikings, keep it simple. It's Justin Jefferson. It's Adam Thielen. It's not KJ Osborne. We wanted to see what he was going to do. Glad we didn't put him into lineups last week and kept him as a sit. We're going to continue to keep him as a sit, but keep him on your bench. Right now, he's nothing more than a boom bust DFS option. We saw Tyler Conklin kind of play that number three role for the Vikings. So until KJ Osborne can do it week in, week out, not a guy that you want to trust in your fantasy lineup. Wait, 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 wait. Alex, I have to stop the show because I'm dumb hyped over this new sponsorship deal we got. Shout out to our guys over at Manscaped. And look, I was skeptical, but Alex, you know I've been a very hairy guy for a long time. I was the kid at 13 years old in middle school. Oh, yeah. With chest hair showing out of the polo shirt. Like, I was that I dude. Was, I, I was jealous at the time. <laughs> I was jealous at the time. Well, <laughs> nothing to be jealous over anymore because ever since I got this lawnmower 4.0 from them, it's been clean down there to say the least. Manscaped has the lawnmower 4.0, not the one, not the two, not the three, but the 4.0. Talk about sleepers on our show, and this has to be one of the best sleeper products out there. I was skeptical as well, and it's been an absolute game changer. Check out Manscaped. This thing is legit, and you will definitely not be disappointed um, by this full body trimmer. It's incredible. So Manscaped was nice enough to give us a 20% off discount code for the Double Move Sports viewers. You can get 20% off and free shipping with code DMS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code DMS, unlock your confidence, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Now back to the show. And then we have the Colts taking on the Dolphins. The Dolphins are one and a half point favorites at home. It's a revenge game for Jacoby Brissett with a 43 and a half point over under and receiving wise. It's, it's not pretty. There's really one guy on each side that I'd be willing to start on the Colts side of the ball. It's Michael Pittman. If I'm desperate, 
I'll plug him in. He's leading the team in targets. He's a downfield slasher. I'm willing to plug him in. Hope he gets the touchdown. Felt the same way about about Zach Pascal, but it's really tough right now with with Carson Wentz banged up to just rely on any of these guys week in, week out. Pascal is really just touchdown or bust. Maybe a desperation flex in a super deep league. Paris Campbell can't start him right now. And then on the Miami side, it's Jalen Waddell and nobody else. I want to see more from Will Fuller before I plug him in, especially with no Tua. I want to see more from Devontae Parker, especially with no Tua. Waddle's the only one that's putting up numbers consistently, has really taken over that number one role from a target perspective for the Dolphins. So he's the guy that I'm rolling out if I have to. Next, we have the Panthers going down to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. The Cowboys are four and a half point favorites. It's a 50 and a half point over under in this game. So expect there to be some points put up and For the wide receivers, it's pretty clear cut. You're starting C.D. Lamb, you're starting Amari Cooper, and you're also starting D.J. Moore. These guys have all solidified themselves as weekly fantasy starters. After that, you're looking at Terrace Marshall. I think he can be a desperation stream in a high-flying matchup with no Christian McCaffrey. I'm interested in Marshall enough that if I'm super desperate in a 14 or 16 team league, that I'm willing to, to plug him in just for this one week as a streamer. With Robbie Anderson, you you can't touch him right now. You you can't start him. He's averaging less than four targets per game. He's almost in in cut territory if he doesn't turn it around. What a pivot for the passing game in Carolina. Seems like DJ Moore should have just been the one last year. I don't really know what changed, but for Robbie Anderson, he he's nothing right now for fantasy. Next, we have the Giants taking on the Saints. The Saints are seven and a half point favorites in this game. It's a disgustingly low. 43 and a half point over under here. You can start Marquez Callaway. I really like Marquez Callaway this week. This seems to be the matchup where we can finally put him in after a strong week fantasy wise against New England. This should be a much softer matchup for Marquez Callaway, who's still playing that outside X role, still playing the Michael Thomas role on this offense. Hopefully Jameis and Danny Dimes can be the gunslingers that they are and make this a fun shootout. I might take the over in this game but I am starting Marquez Callaway. And then we have a lot of questionable players for the Giants. We have Sterling Shepard, who's questionable with the hamstring. We also have Darius Slayton, who's questionable with a hamstring issue. So Kenny Galladay becomes the guy that you want to plug in. He was kind of a a guy that was on the fence. You didn't really know when to start him, when to sit him. But this week, he becomes a clear start with the other two guys banged up. I think if Sterling Shepard plays, if he's in, if he's healthy, you can plug him in there, but you're not touching Slayton either way. If Shepard and Slayton are both out, keep an eye on Kadarius Toney. I think he's a deep league name worth stashing, but I'm still sitting him. I'm not getting cute and putting him in until I see him put up some numbers. Next, we have the Chiefs against the Eagles. The Eagles are six-point underdogs, but there is a beautiful 55-point over-under from Vegas in this game. And this is another one where it's pretty clear-cut. With the Chiefs, you're starting Tyreek Hill. You're sitting everyone else. Don't get cute and and go nuts for Josh Gordon. Don't buy into the hype. The guy's 30 years old, hasn't played since 2019. Don't fall into that trap. But Tyreek Hill is the start for the Chiefs. Even after some bad performances, it is what it is. Tyreek Hill has always been a boom-bust option. I know he had the high floor last year. We know the type of player that Tyreek Hill is. Keep plugging him in every single week. And just grit your teeth through the down weeks and and hope he turns it around the week after. And then on the Eagles side of the ball, Devonta Smith, I believe, is a guy that you can start, especially with the points that are going to be put up in this game. Jalen Ragor becomes an interesting deep flag streamer this week against the Chiefs in a high-flying matchup. I think they're going to need Ragor to do some things and put up numbers. I'm not starting Quez Watkins yet. I need to see more from him, but I, he is a guy that I'm keeping my eyes on who could be the number three, maybe even the number two, because when he gets the ball in his hands, good things are happening. So you're starting Smitty and Ray Gore, no one else from the Eagles, and then Tyree Hill and no one else from the Chiefs. Next, we have the Texans up against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are 16 and a half point favorites in this game. Should be an absolute slaughter for the Texans. It's a 48-point over-under, and it's easy on the Texans side of the ball. It's Brandon Cooks and no one else. And in this matchup, the with the Bills defense that's been shutting teams down, I'm tempering expectations this week with Brandon Cooks, but I'm still rolling him out there because of the target volume that he's getting. 
And on the Bills side of the ball, I'm starting Stephon Diggs, of course, but really no one else. I know Emmanuel Sanders had the big game. I like him a lot this year. I think he could step into that number two role in this offense for fantasy, but I don't expect the Buffalo Bills to really need Sanders to do anything or have big plays. I'm not expecting Cole Beasley to get the PPR volume that he's going to need to be fantasy relevant this week. It's probably going to be a run out the clock tight game for the Bills. If it was a high flying matchup or even just a higher over under, I would be willing to consider Sanders or consider Beasley, but this week it's Diggs and no one else. Now moving into two NFC West shootouts, First, we have the Cardinals taking on the Rams. It's a 54 and a half point over under here. The Rams are six point favorites. You're starting Cooper Cup every single week. The man is on an absolute tear. Robert Woods, oh man, he's he's moving to a flex option. He's moving from a wide receiver two to a wide receiver three at this point. If you're in like a 10 team league or you're just you have a stacked roster, I would be willing to bench Robert Woods. Just because he's not giving us that boom upside yet. But I I think if you drafted him at his ADP, you're stuck starting him. He is a guy that's going to be in your lineup every week. But maybe move him to your flex spot in your mind as opposed to the wide receiver too. I I think though you can start Woods. I will label him as a start. Van Jefferson, still a guy that you're stashing on your bench. He's going to be a sit this week until we see him do it week in, week out. And then for the Cardinals, it's kind of nerve wracking because DeAndre Hopkins started last week, but... He has a rib injury. If you know anything about rib injuries, they're super painful. They don't really affect your your play on the field from like an actual movement standpoint. It's not like you can't put weight on your ribs like you would with like an ACL tear, but it's super painful and it impacts the way that you play. And it definitely impacts the willingness to go and take hits, go up and get high point catches, take receptions in traffic. It's just one of those things that's going to impact your play on the field. But DeAndre Hopkins... If he starts, you have to play him. It's just the nature of having these stud wide receivers on your roster. If we hear more negative and negative things throughout the week from Hopkins practice reports or what Cliff Kingsbury says, maybe we take Hopkins out of lineups because we're that worried. But for now, I'm going to label him as a start, but temper expectations. And with that said, in a high-flying matchup, I think you can start Christian Kirk. I think you can start Rondell Moore. And I think even A.J. Green this week with the high point total projected for this game, he could be a guy that could have some boom performances. We're starting to see him get onboarded into the offense. I don't love it, and I'm certainly not doing it in anything but a deep league, but A.J. Green can be a deep desperation flex in lineups in week four. Staying in the NFC West, though, let's hit on Seahawks at 49ers. The 49ers are two and a half point favorites at home. It's a 52 and a half point over under in this game. You're starting DK Metcalf. You're starting Tyler Lockett. Enough said there. And then I think you're starting Debo and Ayuk for the 49ers. Debo is still the target leader. He had 10 targets on Sunday Night Football against Green Bay in week three. And then for Brandon Ayuk, he's finally getting that snapshot that we want him to get. He's not getting that like punishment. Oh, you're only going to play 40% of snaps and see two targets. Like that's over. He had 86% snaps played against Green Bay in another shootout against Seattle. I'm willing to put Ayuk in this week. He did have the touchdown that kind of saved his day in week three, but we know the ability that Ayuk has based on how he played his rookie year. And you add in that Kittle is day-to-day right now with some calf soreness that could open things up more for the wide receivers in Debo and Ayuk, but I am willing to roll both out there and hope for the best. Next, we have the Ravens taking on the Broncos. Broncos are one-point favorites in this game. It's a pretty low over-under, though, 44 and a half. For the Broncos side of the ball, I'm starting Cortland Sutton. I'm starting Tim Patrick now with K.J. Hamler out for the rest of the season with an ACL tear. Tough scene for K.J. Hamler. And with Jerry Judy still on the IR and out, it's going to be a funnel situation between Sutton, Patrick, and then you add in the tight ends for the Broncos in the passing game. And then on the Ravens side of the ball, I'm trying to sit everybody. It's a tough matchup. The Broncos have a great secondary, honestly, a great defense overall. They've been shutting teams down. And Rashad Bateman could be back this week and take away some of that target volume from Hollywood Brown, especially after some egregious drops against the Lions. Sammy Watkins not getting enough volume to get it done. And I'm still not starting Rashad Bateman. I want to see how he gets onboarded, how soon he gets ramped up as what I believe the next wide receiver won for the Baltimore Ravens, but I'm sitting all Ravens pass catchers besides Mark Andrews here in week four. Next, we have the Steelers taking on the Packers. The Packers are seven-point favorites. 
It's a 45 and a half point over under. And this is another one where a lot of the guys are questionable. Right now, Juju Smith-Schuster is day-to-day with a rib injury. I think if he plays, you can start him. Deontay Johnson, probably going to miss another week with a knee injury. But I think if he plays, you can start him. And then Chase Claypool seems to be the only guy healthy there right now. He's a start regardless, especially, especially though, if Deontay and Juju are out. Look to see some big things from Chase Claypool. He's really the last man standing there. I don't think all three of these guys are going to be able to put up high numbers, but hopefully the floor is there just with the pass volume that Big Ben is dishing out, even though it's not the most efficient passes in the world. And then on the Green Bay side, it's super easy. It's Devontae Adams. It's nobody else. This is just a funneled situation like it was last year between Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones. Everyone else you are not trusting week to week for fantasy unless it's just a super high-flying matchup and you want to risk it with MVS. Last two games here, we get into Sunday Night Football, the overhyped matchup of the century, the Brady-Belichick rematch. I'm expecting the Bucs to steamroll the Patriots here. The Patriots are 6.5-point underdogs. It's a 48.5-point over-under. Like every single week with the Buccaneers, you're rolling out Godwin, Evans, and Antonio Brown. It's going to be tough for all three to have monster performances, but certainly one or two of them will, and the other will have a high floor. Hopefully, we don't get one of those four or five point games from Mike Evans, especially with Rob Gronkowski, a little bit banged up now, could create a more targeted situation for the wide receivers. Granted, the Bucs have one of the best tight end rooms in the league, it seems like. And then on the Patriots side, we have Jacoby Myers, who I am willing to start this week. He saw 14 targets against the Saints. It's a guy that you've got to roll out there. He's looking like the number one for the New England Patriots, which makes Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne clear sits in this game. They're not getting enough consistent volume to get it done. Granted, I would keep Aguilar continue to to be stashed on your bench because he's getting deep downfield targets. He's just not bringing them in that much. But hopefully that improves over the year as Mac Jones gets more settled into this offense. And then we have Monday Night Football, a beautiful 52.5 point over under. The Raiders taking on the Chargers. The Chargers are three and a half point home favorites. And it's straightforward with the receivers. It's Keenan Allen. It's Mike Williams for the Chargers. Mike Williams is is absolutely going off right now. He's the wide receiver one in fantasy football. They're using him in a way that's fantastic for fantasy. He's getting the touchdowns. He's on pace for over a thousand yards. You just have to love what you're seeing from Mike Williams. We saw a little bit of it towards the end of 2020, and it seems like that's carrying over into 2021 in a big way. And then for the Raiders, I think you can start Henry Ruggs this week. Believe it or not, he's had back-to-back seven target games. Derek Carr is balling out, and he's having a super efficient yards per reception. I think Ruggs can be a high upside flex name this week, so I'm starting him. I'm stashing Brian Edwards. I'm not starting him, but he's certainly a guy to keep your eye on. And then Hunter Renfro, I think he can be a desperation flex in PPR leagues in what should be a shootout here. I think Hunter Renfro is good for 10 points if you just need something. If you're in a really, really tough situation with some last minute inactive, something like that, then you can plug in Hunter Renfro, hope for the best, hope for the touchdown to give you a nice performance, but I'm not expecting anything more than 10 points for Renfro in this one. But that's it for the week four wide receiver starts and sits. If you have questions about specifics on your roster, you want to compare two players, you want to throw your takes down and your predictions for the season, you want to take victory laps about how good you are in fantasy football, or maybe you want to just laugh at some funny memes making fun of players that bust. Either way, hit that free Discord link down below. And as always, a like and a sub on YouTube always helps the channel. We appreciate y'all listening and watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.